Let me welcome you to PID webinar. My name is Nadeem al -Haq. We are going to begin our webinar to learn about a very important subject that we often missed, which is logistics. Everybody talks about exports. Everybody talks about sending goods out, but we forget that the only way to send goods out is to have good logistics. As you know, PID likes to take up all these subjects because our job is to learn about the economy and teach you about the economy. And we try and understand the economy from many different perspectives. For too long, Pakistanis have thought that the economy is just a fiscal deficit, macroeconomics. Underpinnings hai, those are very important because without that, we can't possibly uh, become a coherent um, economy that is performing well. So the answer lies in the detail, not just of corporate management, but also of uh, uh, logistics and many other things, energy, uh, management. So we try and take up all those things as we go along. We've done webinars on management, we've done webinars on and we write things up too. So with that introduction, let me say that we are going to talk about logistics today. The logistics industry, which is how things move, goods move, goods get distributed, goods get from point one to A. Um, and that's very important to understand because this is an issue in Pakistan that we have struggled with, but have not quite achieved the efficiency that we want. Those of us who get things from Daraz and Food Panda, we know that logistics still um, need a long way to go. So for that, uh, we've invited two very eminent people. One is Babar Badat, who's probably the authority on logistics in Pakistan. He himself has a logistics company, one of the largest in Pakistan, but is a man who's been involved in logistics in Pakistan, has been involved in the trade corridor, has been involved in many things, has authored the transport policy, done a lot of things. So I think he is absolutely the right man to talk about logistics. The second person we've got to talk about logistics is Asan Malik. Asan also needs no introduction. He has been the CEO of um, Unilever. He is now the chairman of the business council uh, in, in, in uh, 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 Karachi, which is a very important uh, business think tank group uh, run by a very large business. Asan Malik is a well-known manager, has done a lot of work um, in the multinational in sector of Pakistan. So he knows how to distribute goods and he knows what logistics means. So I think we are going to have a treat today to understand what logistics is. So um, Babar Sab, I think I'll invite you to teach us about logistics. But yeah, I'd love to learn about it. Thank you very much. Now I'll just sit and listen. Thank you, Babar Sab. Thank you, Dr. Sab. Asalaamu Alaikum, Asan. Dr. Saab and the rest who are online. Um, Dr. Saab, uh, thank you very much. You've been very generous in your comments, uh, um, uh, uh, introducing me. Thank you for that. But uh, uh, logistics, uh, Dr. Saab, is, uh, is, is, uh, is a very important subject, as you've said. And unfortunately, we have not been able to give it enough uh, time and, uh, and attention over the years, you know. Um, today, uh, it's become a global issue. Five of the most uh, critical issues facing the world today, uh, of course, uh, logistics is one of them. So in the G9 uh, uh, and all the uh, uh, powerful economies, if you look at any of their uh, critical issues, you will see uh, COVID and vaccination is one issue. Climate change and environment is the second issue. Third issue is the global supply chain, quickly followed by taxes, um, uh, which they want to reset, and of course, refugee migration. So um, logistics and supply chain is a very important factor, which is now affecting the global economy. So um, uh, rightly so, you picked this up, and I think Pakistan needs to address this, it, it's, um, uh, this particular um, um, issue very, very uh, profoundly. Uh, when in the beginning, uh, when our country started off, um, we spent the first 15 years, um, uh, I think, on, on, on developing our agriculture. In the 60s, we moved our attention towards industry. And I think industry developed very well at that time. 
and uh, both industry and uh, agriculture developed pretty well uh, during the, uh, the first uh, few decades of this country. However, today we are in a, in, in, a, in a problem with our water supply, we are in a problem uh, with our industry. Although in textiles we have done well, but there is, uh, there is limitations in, our, in, in the scale of industry that we have. Similarly, there's a water issue that we have a persistent issue. Uh, so these things have still continued uh, despite the fact that we've been able to give a lot of time um, and attention to these two areas. However, uh, the important part is that logistics is an area, the infrastructure for logistics has not been developed. So for any product, whether manufactured or produced, for it to move from the floor of the, of the factory or for it to move from the fields to the point of consumption, you have to have uh, efficient logistics. Or for it to move from our borders or our ports and airports to, to, to other destinations, global destinations where we need to, um, uh, to deliver our exports, we have to have efficient logistics. We, uh, you, you can manufacture as cheaply and produce as cheaply, but if you don't have a well-defined uh, connected logistics industry, it will be very difficult uh, to, 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 to leverage that opportunity. Today, um, logistics is a word which encompasses uh, just about anything uh, in the movement of goods, whether it is air freight, whether it is sea freight, it is road transport, uh, whatever it is, uh, it encompasses everything. So. Logistics is an area which I think um, is, is, is defines the entire supply chain in, in, in one word. Now, CPAC, CPAC, pass forward to, to, the, to, the, to the current time. CPAC is an opportunity which, is, um, uh, which has come up recently. However, uh, before that, we had other opportunities because of the changes in the region. Um, there were changes, uh, there was a war in Afghanistan, there were changes in the region. However, Pakistan was not able to leverage uh, this opportunity in promoting our, uh, our, our, our connectivity in the region, promoting our logistics and our, our trucking industry and all this. So there was a, there was a big shortfall. Uh, there was a big shortfall uh, and we were not able to uh, move as fast as we should have. However, uh, I think the biggest problem was, the biggest problem that we faced was that there was no focal point where the industry could, uh, could, uh, could, could, could have a dialogue with the government or the government could, could uh, sort of roll out any policy matter. So we were actually spread over, the industry itself was spread over seven ministries. Uh, for, uh, for shipping, it was ports and shipping, rail was a separate ministry, for customs, it was finance. For air freight on issues with air, it was Ministry of Defense. Uh, so, you know, the seven ministries where we are spread out. So there is no focal point where you can develop. So some years ago, the government had decided, the government at the time had decided to create a National Trade Corridor Improvement Program. It was a very profound program and had the support of the World Bank. And this program brought about some changes. However, uh, that uh, particular exercise showed to us that uh, an independent ministry for this particular trade would fare well, would do well. Now, you could then question it that we have an uh, independent ministry for railways. As I was speaking to, um, to uh, Sansab this morning, and, and we had this discussion, and we were saying um, uh, that, you know, railways has, uh, railways has a separate uh, ministry, but they've not been able to move. So uh, in, in this case, you know, railways itself is probably bigger than the ministry, so therefore there was a problem, you know. Uh, but in this case, in logistics, I think if you bring in uh, things step by step, we will we, we should be able to do things which are development oriented and need to move forward. In the meantime, it's important to see what the private sector has been doing. The private sector uh, took up, the, uh, uh, you know, sort of um, um, uh, looked at logistics, international freight forwarding, and how this is happening, and we decided to go for some international assimilation. So the private sector, first of all, uh, brought in uh, FIATA into Pakistan, uh, which is the global body, 100-year-old um, uh, organization headquartered in, in, in Switzerland. 
uh, which define which is quite defining as far as logistics is, is, is concerned. So in Pakistan, we set up our national association of logistics. We had it connected with FIATA, and then FIATA had a direct uh, uh, partnership with, with FIFA over here in the development process. So, but this was all done in the private sector. Similarly, this was done in 2004, it started the initiative. Around the same time, we started another initiative on, on cross-border trucking. So the International Road Union, the IRU was brought in over here and, uh, and, and we started working on it using the TIR mechanism. Now the TIR mechanism is a, is a United Nations uh, convention and you have to adopt it, which allows the movement of goods across borders without um, uh, uh, separate checks at every border. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good system which works very well. It's worked very well in Europe for several years. Now it's in other different parts of the world. And we have tried to introduce that so that our regional connectivity can improve. That exercise took the private sector 14 years, 14 years to get it approved. Once it was approved in 2015, it is still under implementation. It got implemented in, in well, in fact, it got implemented in the summer of uh, 2021. Uh, but we're still struggling and trying to see how uh, we should move forward. Uh, the, the overall connectivity of different, different aspects in th making things work, right? the customs or the state bank or the uh, Ministry of Commerce, Ministry of Communication, all of them work in different tangents and it becomes very difficult to, to, to coordinate. And therefore, our logistics has always been, um, you know, sort of um, hostish uh, to, to, to not being able to develop. So I think there is a very, very important aspect that we need to have a separate ministry which should be working uh, uh, towards the development of, uh, of, of this particular uh, area. Now, when you say this, um, it's also important when I said that, uh, you know, all different facets now are, uh, are, are, are under the terminology of logistics. I think it's the reason basically uh, it's unitized transport. Uh, several years ago, the trade started moving in containers. And as containers became the main mode of transport, I think about 90% of global commercial trade, other than the bulk cargoes like coal and all this, 90% of the trade moves in containers. And because containers are no longer a port to port operation, containers are point to point. So you can actually load a container on a factory and deliver it where it's supposed to be consumed. So this whole operation, instead of being separate for shipping, separate for trucking, has is been taken over by logistic companies. So in the last 20 years, you've seen global logistic companies grow a lot. They have grown up, they've grown exponentially and they have, they've become very big. On the other hand, individual companies like, uh, like shipping companies and all have had a difficult time. Uh, there have been bankruptcies and mergers and until this pandemic came and things have changed a lot, of course. Uh, but before that, they were in trouble. So uh, the logistic, uh, in fact, every shipping company, most of the shipping companies opened their own logistic uh, wings. So they were trying to uh, emulate the logistics model and that's what they were doing. Even now, there are a lot of changes coming into the industry. Uh, Pakistan and the realization in Islamabad uh, or at the government level is very little in these areas. So we, uh, we are in a float where we are trying to fix up our uh, things on our own as a private sector. However, we do not have support from uh, legislative support on this. Uh, our entire shipping, uh, whatever it's worth, uh, works on a law which is 1857, uh, COXA. This needs to be updated. Uh, there has been several attempts in working with the government and trying to uh, do this, but there is no action. Our road uh, law is also uh, old. Our basic uh, things in, in road transport are difficult. So, uh, so there are a lot of areas that we need to look at. And it's, uh, you know, frankly speaking, you have to be really passionate to pursue uh, development of the industry at the government level because the roadblocks and the challenges are so, so much. Um, um, I don't know why this would be the case. Uh, you know, they, they, maybe they don't know better in, in Islamabad in, in many uh, relevant areas or offices. But we have to make, uh, we have to work together. We have to do things in which this can be developed. Um, for example, um, uh, shipping. Now, this is, a, 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 there are seven modes of transport. You know, there is, there is shipping, there is air, there is road, there is, uh, which is trucking, there is rail, 
then there is inland waterways and there is pipelines and there's transmission lines. These are seven commercial modes of transport. Now, if you look at each of these modes, um, you know, you know we, we are still trying to get a pipeline thing done, uh, you know, with, um, uh, with the central Asian states, gas pipeline, and we're still looking at the power line. So that's two areas which we uh, put on the side. There's a lot of work, which uh, discussion which was on and some work which was done in developing inland waterways, but they're very seasonal. And so I don't know if we can do it. Uh, I don't think we can do the full length uh, of, 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 of our rivers. But uh, inland waterway is again uh, a challenge. Now, if you come to the main other main uh, four areas, uh, you look at uh, ocean transport. Pakistan, a country of 200 billion people, 1100 kilometer coastline. We don't have a single ship. There is not a single container ship. We've got a few bulkers and, and, and old tankers which are run by PNSC. We don't have a single shipping company. We don't have a single ship owned by a container ship owned by this country, which is unheard of in world history ever. This has never happened. We, we are totally uh, deficient. We have no, uh, if the shipping lines stop calling over here, we are gone. There's no exports. There's nothing that we can do. Okay, one, we have got this problem. Second problem is we don't have a trucking industry. The entire trucking industry is in the, in the informal sector. There is no proper financing. There is no structured corporate entities. And every time the government has a need, they look at NLC. NLC is a government organization. It's not a national carrier, but it is a trucking company operated by a, gov a government unit. But they have uh, regional um, uh, limitations. They don't, for whatever reason, don't use Afghanistan for transit, and they want to go through Iran. However, Iran is a sanctioned country, so state bank cannot authorize their EE form. So, you know, it's very, very difficult to, to, to move forward. So unless everybody sits down together, looks at this as a Pakistan subject, the private sector, the government, uh, and everybody looks at it, then, it, then it, we can have a look at it. PIA, I remember PIA, it's a, it's a national carrier. Some years ago, I don't know what's the situation now, but some years ago, whenever the mango season would come, uh, PIA, was, uh, the PIA was the carrier, Saudia was the carrier, and a couple of others. PIA used to be the first one to increase the freight rate. You can't, uh, how can, how can are we promote our exports if, if independent profit centers and the government start doing that? You know, Dubai was actually made by Emirates Airline. Emirates Airline took the lead role in creating and making Dubai what it is today. The whole network, the stopovers, everything. Our airline has, uh, was the first to, 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 to increase the freight. So there is no chance of any of our exports to be promoted. So they have to have uh, interlining or inter, um, uh, inter-ministerial discussion or focal point where they can get concessions to make their profitability balance or maybe reduce the tax on the fuel that they charge. I, I don't know how you want to do it, how the government wants to do it. But there has to be benefit of the national carrier going to the exporter so that the exports can increase. Similarly, uh, I, I, th I don't think Pakistan is ready to own container ships. PNSC doesn't have the, or, or our environment doesn't have the, uh, the training or the personnel to be able to handle uh, container ships because they are very, very refined operations that unlike the bulkers and, uh, and you have to have a very, uh, synchronized, uh, synchronized operation. So I'm not so sure if we can do that. However, unitized transport does allow us to do other things. Uh, we can have uh, companies, uh, uh, private sector companies and government companies owning containers. And those containers can be uh, loaded onto chartered vessels or they can be loaded onto uh, slot charters and all. But these things need to come to the fore if we are actually serious in increasing our exports. Pakistan's exports cannot increase or go to a level unless we have smart logistics. Economies which, which, which have understood this thing are investing very heavily into their connectivity, into their uh, expansion of their of the logistics capabilities. Um, you know, um, after the 2008 debacle, financial debacle, global debacle, China um, saw that the, uh, the order book was low. America, Europe stopped buying. So China then uh, moved its attention to developing its, uh, its uh, infrastructure. So in the five-year plan from 2008 to uh, starting 2008, uh, China invested heavily 
in developing their local logistics infrastructure. So if you took a flight, a daytime flight, any anywhere across um, China during those years, you would see the whole country was dug up. There was um, there was uh, airports being built, terminals, ports, uh, train lines, roads, highways, motorways, and they did this in five years and and, and most of it. And when they were ready in 2012 and 13, they decided that they need to create this infrastructure into those markets where they export. So they created a land bridge uh, across from China into, into Europe. And this was, uh, they had five lines uh, going at that time, train lines going from the east coast of China right into the industrial heartland of Europe. It was Germany, it was France, later, uh, it was Italy, later on also UK. And uh, I remember in 2018, they had something like two, like uh, 3,700 trucks in that year, uh, train, trains in that uh, year that left, which was more than 10 fully laden cargo trains every day, leaving from the east coast of uh, China and going into Europe. So they invested very heavily and they, 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 that gave them the opportunity to leverage. Um, similarly, uh, Europe saw that what they need to do and they were uh, aligned themselves with several Chinese investment uh, programs and, and one belt, one road came up and you know, I think everybody knows the story after that. Um, but we in Pakistan, of course, we've got, uh, as I said, we've got CPAC, we've got opportunities of connectivity where we can see but we have to get our own house in order. We have to understand that PIA should not be an independent profit center. It should be there being a national carrier. It should be there to promote national exports. If NLC has got um, uh, a trucking uh, ambitions for a trucking thing, it should do trucking. It is doing five other things. But if they're doing trucking, they need to, they need to take the lead if they want to, but get the private sector involved also. Um, you know, if, if NLC buys uh, 200 trucks and competes with the private sector, uh, they've done that before. They were not able to do it because it's a different mechanism. Private sector works differently. But if they go and sync with the private sector, the amount of land that NLC has, the other, uh, the other circle to complete the, the trucking circle, there are so many other things that need to be done. So instead of owning 200 trucks and competing with the 2,000 private sector trucks, they should not own the trucks. They should create uh, infrastructure to support the 2,000 Pakistani trucks. So if NLC comes and says, okay, fine, we are going to set up um, um, a real estate station, border post, and so many other things that they want to do, uh, that, that they can do, and uh, work with the trucking sector. So combined, we become a national force. We become very large, and we must think nationally now instead of, instead of looking at our independent profit centers. And, um, and, and, and that too should be the role as far as the government is concerned. Similarly, I would say the same thing for PNSC. PNSC needs to sit down. We've got some very, very smart people in the private sector. They should be taken on board, people from shipping. Uh, you've got um, a very good operator who, who's been very big in container trade. We've got a, a very good person for chartered, uh, for chartering over here who's done operated ships himself. You can get these people on board and, 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 and look at on, on a national level. So uh, I think these are some of the things which need to be addressed from one point, um, and, and we have to see uh, how, how we are able to move forward on these things. Now, um, I've been speaking on these things for, for quite a few years now and at different governments and different um, organizations. And uh, so I've just taken down some notes. I'm just trying to sift through them and see if there's anything um, that, uh, else that I can mention over here. Um, uh, no. What we also try to do in private sector, we have reached out to the logistics organizations in the region. So you've got the CARIC region, uh, you've got the ECO region, and, um, um, uh, and we've tried to see if we can connect with them to promote logistics. Now, it's very important to see that regional trade actually plays an important part in every economy. Um, I think in, in the NAFTA region, it's something like between the NAFTA countries, something like 35 or 40% is regional trade. If you go to the European Union, it's again about 40% is the regional trade. Our regional trade is probably 4 or 5%. We've just disconnected. In fact, Pakistan, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the number of people over here, may just be the most disconnected country in the world. We have had wars going on in our north for many years. 
we've got um, um, uh, politically hostile uh, neighbor on the eastern side. Uh, on our western side, we've got a sanctioned country. And in the south, we don't have any ships. So <laughs> actually, we are, we are probably the most disconnected 200 million people anywhere else in the world. So these things warrant very, very serious uh, deliberations, very serious um, uh, discussions. And we need to move in that direction um, while you are working on developing and promoting the exports and a lot of other things. I think we really need to focus on this. We need to get the people on board. We have to have a unison uh, in, in, our, in our policy. Uh, the government uh, organizations in the trans. You look at railways again. Uh, railways, uh, nothing much to look at. So, railways, uh, ocean, um, shipping, air, road, all these areas, we need to get these organizations to sit down and see how we can work in promoting the private sector. Um, uh, just trucking with itself uh, is it, ridiculous. Our, our fleet is, uh, we've got, um, uh, you know, uh, about 300,000 trucks, which are, uh, which you can call trucks, the rest of them, you may not be able to call trucks also. And none of them uh, is capable to go cross border. We've we've just, uh, as I said, we're trying. We've just launched last year the TIR, which means that the trucks from uh, China, um, Central Asia, and Iran and Turkey will be able to come to Pakistan. And when they be, when they come here, obviously they'll pick up the goods, and we won't be in a position to do it. So the government, let's say, uh, needs to create the opportunities for the private sector to move. You know, when um, when uh, the one war was going on, there were three countries and the breakup. In fact, the breakup of Russia also took up, uh, started. There were three countries who had an opportunity, um, uh, not the one war, the Central Asia, the creation of Central Asia, in fact. When that happened, three countries had an, had an opportunity, Pakistan, Iran, and uh, Turkey. Pakistan, despite the fact that we had the Afghan uh, traffic going, we had five, six hundred containers moving through our ports every day into over there. We had the opportunity to look at developing our infrastructure for Central Asia. We could have done, uh, prepared ourselves. Of course, there was a war going on, but we could have done that. We, we, we were not able to leverage that. We did not do it. The private sector uh, and the government were not in sync, so we did not do it. Iran, despite the fact they had sanctions, they created a very large uh, road transport industry. They created the infrastructure and they, they did that. Turkey itself went miles ahead. They created a very large trucking in, uh, infrastructure. Uh, Turkey, in fact, is now challenging all the European truckers. Turkey is probably bigger, is probably uh, closer or maybe bigger than the Germans also in trucking in, in Europe. And they've been able to do this. So, um, uh, and what they did was, in fact, I remember what the Turks uh, and the Iranians also did, they went out, they wanted to uh, do a fleet formation exercise quickly. So they went in and they bought long haul trucks from Mercedes and, um, uh, you know, Savio and all these big uh, long haul truck manufacturers, Nissan and all. They bought these trucks, they brought them back, and then they gave them on, uh, on um, they financed them for the private sector. So the entire private sector took them up and, 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 and they were able to create, in a few months, they were able to create a large pool of fleet uh, over there. We need to do something like that. We need to open the window for fleet formation. We need to remove uh, the duty structure. We need to give opportunity. It can be a window, it can be a one year window. So truckers and transporters could do that. Uh, similarly, uh, even for our, the movement of our goods within the country, and, uh, and I, I, I leave that for, um, uh, for um, uh, San to speak um, on this because he represents business, so I'm sure he's got a point of view on that. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, uh, I was talking about exports and even exports uh, when they are in the country, how, how they are done. So, uh, so we need to put all these uh, uh, organizations and, uh, and government bodies, all of them together in this, and we need to sit down, we need to put our heads together, we need to um, uh, refine some of, the, some of the work that we have done. And I'll tell you one more thing what we have done. Uh, other than these four areas, um, trucking, shipping, air freight, and railways, which is, which is, uh, which is something that we look, need to look at, we, the private sector worked with the government and created a trucking reform policy. This was done some years ago. 
the thing, um, the policy had got cabinet approval, but then um, there was a change in the, in the government and the policy has just remained over there. That needs to be pulled out. It's a very profound policy. It's very detailed. I've personally worked on it and be, uh, uh, been involved in it. And that deals with every single aspect, including um, uh, Excel load control, which is a very critical issue over here. Our trucks, 10-ton uh, capacity carries 40 tons. Uh, uh, as a result, the whole sector remains an informal, and you know there's, there's a lot of uh, allied issues with that, which is another discussion. We need to fix that up. Uh, we need to we need to we need to get large scale investment into it. The big business houses, I know for a fact. I've been asked questions by more than half a dozen big business houses over here interested in investing in trucking, but it's informal, so they can't do it. They can't do it. So, but if the right opportunities are created, we must create large trucking companies. Um, I think in our population, the DNA is good for trucking. You have some 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 um, uh, good uh, resource space over here for trucking, like the Turks have that uh, also. So we we can do it, and we can move in the region also. But it is extremely important that we do that. So there is a trucking reform policy which was done a few years ago that needs to be um, uh, to be fixed. Now that trucking reform policy also has uh, regional transit agreements with it. It has international conventions which are pending. It's a very uh, detail um, uh, uh, document which again needs to be fixed. Then a few years ago, uh, while I was um, um, uh, involved with Fiat, uh, I was on the board and heading it all over there for some years. While I was there, I was um, in fact asked by the trade minister um, uh, to to look at developing Radak uh, Dautsab to developing. Uh, what can be developed uh, for for logistics? So I worked um, um, uh, with the Ministry of Communications because there was somebody relevant over there, and we worked together and appointed and an, an a consultant. And uh, I worked uh, with them and the consultant and a lot of other organizations, and we have come up with a very good transport and logistics policy, which was finished last year. It was launched. But uh, it is still uh, doing the rounds uh, for cabinet approval, for this approval, for that approval. It's not coming forth. We need to get that policy done. We need to get the trucking reform policy. We need to get the transport and logistics policy. We need to get these things done so that we can move forward and 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 work on holistically on it. So, um, um, uh, San Saab and uh, Nadeem Saab, uh, Saab I'll, I'll, these are some of the thoughts that I had on the subject. Uh, as best as I could translate my thoughts, and um, I've been able to do it. Of course, we can have um, uh, discussions in detail on every aspect, but this is a very broad overview on what needs to be done and how we should move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Babar Saab. Babar Saab, before I go to Asan Saab, a small thing to tell you. Why is it that you need so much government intervention? I see that in Pakistan, for example, trucks are all over the road. When we travel, there are many, many trucks that we see on the road. On the GD road, there is a truck truck. Now, are, are all these trucks owned by small enterprises? Why do they become a big enterprise, Unilever type enterprise? Why do they become a big enterprise, or container services type of enterprise? Why do they become a big enterprise, which owns these trucks? मुझे तो लग रहा है ट्रक सारे मतलब ड्राइवर्स खुद ही ओन करते हैं या छोटे मोटे लोग हैं ये इंडस्ट्री कंसोलिडेट क्यों नहीं करती देखिए ये जो ट्रकिंग इंडस्ट्री है ना बाय इट्स नेचर मैंने आपको कहा था हमारे डीएनए में ट्रकिंग है हमारे जो नॉर्दर्न एरियाज हैं पंजाब का नॉर्दर्न एरिया फ्रंटियर का एरिया उधर काफी लोग हैं वो नो नथिंग एल्स एक्सेप्ट दिस तो फैमिली ओन ट्रक्स हैं एक ट्रक में तीन भाई ओनर हैं यू नो दो भाइयों की चार ट्रक हैं इस टाइप के ऑपरेशंस बहुत ज्यादा है एंड इट्स इट्स एन एसएमई सेक्टर बेसिकली ऑफ कोर्स देर हैव बीन कॉर्पोरेट एंटिटीज हु हैव चैलेंज द टाइड्स एंड डन इट वी हैव आवरसेल्फ डन इट वी हैव गॉट अ कपल ऑफ कंपनीज वी ओन ट्रक्स इन डिफरेंट एरियाज बट एसेंशियली इट इज नॉट इनवाइटिंग आई विल टेल यू वन बेसिक थिंग Excel load control is a contravention of the law. It is not being implemented. There is a standard global uh, standard. There is a global standard under which you should a truck should carry only so much of weight. If it doesn't, it risks safety issues, and it destroys the truck and it destroys the road. In Pakistan, we continue 
to flout that rule. Uh, that rule. And this move, so a corporate, corporate entity, if you get, uh, th th there is hesitation over there, there is a problem over there. Uh, the trade benefits from this because uh, oh, ton ki usi truck pe, uh, jata hai, hai, hai. but in the short term, hai, but in the long term, it's not good. If, they, if, if, if every bit sits down together and actually brings in a policy of load control, there will be more investment. So there will be a short, short period of where more trucks will be required or there may be a shortage, but very quickly, uh, the fleets will increase. So that is one. Secondly, up America ka example, le, America may sorry trucking industry fragmented. So they always have a problem over there in trucking. There is currently also a problem going on. In Europe, it is relatively corporate uh, owned. There is private sector, but a lot of it is corporatized uh, in, in Europe. So uh, they've got a different mechanism. The financing is different. So in Pakistan, I think if you, uh, there are a few com companies who ventured into trucking recently in the last few years, but they have leveraged their financial position due to their other industries and invested over there. Standalone, the trucking industry is, is, is not the way that they've done it. So we need to have standalone uh, to do that one. Secondly, sitting in Pakistan, we have a Pakistan market is only limited to a certain size. If you if a big company or corporation or invests over here, you need to look at the region. And to look at the region, we need to have a lot of laws in place. We need to have a lot of initiatives done. And therefore, you require government intervention, starting from local uh, load control up to cross-border uh, and financing and everything else. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Baba Sahib. Hassan Sahib, let me turn to you. You, mashallah, uh, headed Palmolive and you head the Pakistan Business Council. So aapka to, you know very well how to distribute goods. And it seems that the multinational doesn't seem to have much of a problem distributing goods, but our local businesses seem to have difficulties. Can you please explain to us what the issues in logistics are from your end? Okay, so Dr. Sab, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, I have I've never had, had it uh, Palmolive. I work for Unilever, which is a competitor for uh, quality Palmolive. Sorry, uh, but that's not, but, Unilever. But, but, yeah, but that, that's not important. Uh, Dr. Sab, one, one other thing when you were introducing me, which was, you know, you very kindly introduced me. One thing that you forgot to mention was that uh, we have something in common. Uh, we have worked in Sri Lanka and Egypt. Um, and we all know that... Uh, one of the uh, best customers or the three of the best customers of IMF happen to be the three countries, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and uh, uh, Egypt. Um, so so that's something we have in common. And, and I think one of the reasons why uh, logistics uh, as an industry has not developed and remains fragmented uh, is also uh, very similar to some of the other uh, reforms that need to be done uh, to fix the fundamentals of Pakistan, which over the last 75 years we have not been able to do. Uh, so that said, uh, Babur, uh, I think very uh, clearly articulated the case for a, a holistic approach to 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 toward logistics. Logistics is a multifaceted, uh, you know, uh, sector, um, and then he's covered very, you know, capably, uh, you know, road, rail, air, sea, and so on, uh, and of course the infrastructures like rail, truck station, ports, airports, and so on. And each of these really need to work. Uh, in tandem in a very synchronized manner because it is the weakest link in the chain that actually, you know, basically uh, lets the, uh, the country down or the other sector down. Um, so I'm uh, not an expert at all in logistics. Uh, I have some limited experience as a user, uh, but also at the Pakistan Business Council, uh, we work uh, to, to promote uh, the competitiveness of the country. So I'm going to really speak from that perspective. Um, what Barber doesn't know about logistics can be put on a very small uh, postage stamp on the back. Uh, what I don't know about logistics probably will take many billboards. Um, so that said, let's move forward. Um, I'm primarily going to focus on uh, inland freight transportation because as the title of this uh, webinar suggested, it is, you know, this is really at the start of the logistics chain. Um, Barber has actually tried to cover some of the other facets. Uh, very quickly, what do we try to do at Pakistan Business Council? So Pakistan Business Council's overarching theme is what we call Make in Pakistan. Uh, and this has three main objectives. Uh, primary objective is to create jobs. Equally important is to promote value-added exports, but also um, you know, the third facet is very important, which is encouraging self-sufficiency and import substitution, wherever it makes economic sense. Yeah? Um, there are also three uh, main pillars of Make in Pakistan. 
the first one is what we call Grow More, which is all about optimizing Pakistan's agriculture to address the food security. Uh, and as we know, Pakistan is one of the highest, uh, has one of the highest population growth rates. In many of the recent years, our, our agriculture growth has, has been you know, below the population growth rate. Uh, and so therefore food security becomes very critical and of course affordability, uh, which also, also means entails a swift and efficient filling of the supply gap, uh, supply demand gaps within the country. Um, and last but not the least, also we need to, uh, to uh, you know, contain the impacts on the external account. Um, the second uh, important leg of Make in Pakistan is what we call Make More. Uh, this is to reverse the deindustrialization over the last couple of decades. And a country can only obviously export what it makes or produces. Uh, and we have models like Vietnam and Bangladesh where uh, they are able to, to, to become very effective converters uh, of imported materials which they are able to export at a very competitive rate. And last but not the least is what we call serve more, uh, which really in the context of today's talk, we should call serve better, uh, which is where logistics comes in. Uh, so why better logistics? So Pakistan is, as we know, a north-south country. Yeah, um, We have Punjab, which is the highest populated province, and that is the center of agriculture produce in the country. Uh, and most of that obviously is you know, Punjab and north. Um, industry uh, and the largest uh, center of industry really is Karachi, which is way down uh, in the south. That's about a thousand kilometers away. Um, textile exports, which are primarily based on cotton are produced in a near 50-50 split in Punjab and Karachi, um, Balochistan and KPK are net reliant on the rest of the country for supplies. So in this canvas, geographical canvas, moving goods is not only essential to serve the domestic needs by matching demand and supply in the most efficient manner, but also it is important to minimize the cost of exports and create competitiveness, especially you know, products that are produced in North. Now, just to put matters into context, Bangladesh, which is the one of the uh, eyeball competitors of Pakistan when it comes to textiles, um, most of uh, Bangladesh's uh, uh, you know production units are in the coastal areas around Chittagong, uh, so they are able to avoid expensive inland transportation. And you know I've heard people say it is cheaper to move uh, to ship goods from Karachi to Singapore than than to to truck it from uh, Lahore to Karachi. Well. It is a fact that sea transportation is always going to be, uh, you know, cheaper than than inland transportation. It doesn't need to be as as different as it is today, um, but but it, it is, yeah. So Bangladesh enjoys that competitive advantage, and we need to create that competitive advantage in our logistics. Uh, India, of course, has the benefit of ports in west, east, and south, and they have large industrial complexes close by. So proximity to the ports is very important. Um, so Pakistan's freight transportation in general, in my opinion, is uh, you know, unorganized. It is fragmented as we've already covered. It is mostly in the informal sector, as, as Babur mentioned. It is inefficient, it is slow, it is costly, it is unreliable, and often it is unsafe for the reasons that have already been mentioned. Uh, the sector overall does not promote the productive capacity of competitors or, or the competitiveness of the country. It results in waste of resources. Many of these resources like fuel are imported. Um, so they, they create a burden or, on our, our trade balance. Um, the, the, the trucks uh, damage uh, the goods that they are, uh, they're transporting as well as the roads uh, that they're using. Uh, and then of course it also results in accidents and fatalities. So not surprisingly, Pakistan's logistics are ranked 122 amongst 160 countries in the World Bank's logistics performance index. This was last measured in 2000, it was last measured in 2020, but based on data of 2018. I have not seen a more uh, recent uh, index. Um, the so Pakistan is significantly below India. Pakistan, as I mentioned, 122, India 44, Vietnam 53. Um, of the many reasons for the poor state of Pakistan's logistics, the major one is the very high 94% reliance on road transportation. Uh, globally, it is, you know, road transportation does not represent more than 40 or 50%. So railways, which used to account in Pakistan for 85% of the freight movement in the 1950s, that share has now shrunk to just 6%. Now the world over, whether you look at it from a cost point of view or speed point of view, a safety point of view, environmental impact point of view, rail will beat, and particularly electric rail will beat road transportation, you know, hands down. 
Um, so we, we, you know, by relying on road uh, transportation, we, we have that impediment. Uh, road transport is, is uh, you know, rail transport is always the more cost-effective mode of uh, logistics. Um, just to illustrate that uh, better, one gallon of fuel can transport, I mean, utilized in rail transport, one gallon of fuel can transport a ton of goods for up to 250 miles compared to just 90 miles on the road. Yeah, so you can see the stark difference uh, of, of the economics of rail transportation. However, due mainly to the, the state control of um, um, our railways, mismanagement, underinvestment in rail tracks, um, you know, rail, railways have, have suffered in the country. We are still primarily using the, the single uh, routes uh, or rail tracks that the British left us. Um, very quickly to just put something else into, pers uh, into, into perspective. You know, we keep talking about CPAC and CPAC is, you know, 60 billion investment and very important. And it is no doubt important, um, particularly in, in terms of the logistics uh, thing. But the British left us ro uh, rail, uh, railway networks. The British left us with an irrigation network. And I think the current value of that would be something like five times the investment that CPEC is, uh, you know, going to result in the country. So we do owe it to the British, no matter what they what their intent was to uh, to create it. But we are we continue to be, be the beneficiaries, but we've just simply not done enough to improve it. The journey journey times by train are significantly longer than the global norm. Uh, also, the rolling stock is not reliable, and therefore delivery becomes very unpredictable. Um, so road transportation is therefore the preferred choice. The ML1 linking uh, the south with the north uh, has been delayed uh, pending financing support. We were hoping to hear something, you know, some good news after the PM's visit. Maybe we will in due course. I believe Pied has already covered the ML project, uh, the deep sub, uh, yeah. and, and so yeah. no no point in going into that. Um, so it, it will, you know, it will uh, when when it is done, you know, it will cut the speed from or increase the speed from 80 kilometers per hour to 160 kilometers per hour. The Jakobabad, uh, uh, sorry, Gwadar Jakobabad linkage and the Gwadar Karachi rail links are also very important, but they still exist on paper. Uh, at least I'm not aware of any practical work that has started on that. Um, now, another reason for the poor ranking of Pakistan's logistics is the age and condition of the trucking fleet, as I think Barbara touched upon. There are between trucks and pickups 500,000 more want of a better term, transportation units flying on the roads in Pakistan. Most of them are old, they're obsolete. They have very rigid suspensions, particularly the old Bedford trucks. Uh, they end up damaging both the goods that they transport because of the, you know, the, uh, the shock that the, the goods suffer, but also the roads get destroyed. Um, they also consume higher fuel. Uh, they lack the speed to serve as, as efficient means of freight transportation. Globally, about 53% of the carbon uh, emissions are produced by heavy and medium trucks, and Pakistan has yet to avail the emerging zero emissions technology, which is now currently being rolled out in Europe. Incidentally, uh, one of the growing concerns, uh, I mean, we know that climate change is a growing concern, um, and potentially the reformed uh, or whatever will replace the EU GSP plus program, which as you know, expired in 2023, may well uh, require green transportation as, as one yeah. of the conditionalities. So that's going to be very important going forward. Uh, so due to the weak regulatory environment, trucks are overloaded, creating safety hazards, drivers and freight are generally uninsured. Most trucks are owner operated as we know, and the industry is fragmented mostly in the informal sector. The State Bank of Pakistan has recently launched a collateral free government guaranteed and subsidized bank credit scheme. So even though the lending rate uh, on that is going to be significantly lower than the informal sector lending rate, otherwise called the Pathan lending rate, something to the tune of about, you know, the, 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 the informal sector rate is about five times uh, what, what the banks are going to charge. The likelihood of the informal truckers to, to avail of that is very low because they are very frightened of the FDR. Um, so, you know, uh, and, 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 and not just going forward, but, but they're also afraid of, of the questions that will be asked about their past. So, now we have seen in the real estate, uh, uh, which is primarily an un un unproductive sector, uh, amnesties have been granted, but logistics, which is a very important sector, contributes 13.5% of GDP, and it generates 5.5% of the total jobs in the country. There's no talk of any, any, any accommodation being provided to them. Um, there is no subsidized or, or concessional uh, rate of financing that is available. 
when turf came in that did not cover the logistics uh, uh, sector at all um, so not surprising then there are very few well organized logistics providers uh, and the one that exists of you know serve specialized needs such as for example the transportation of heavy equipment uh, for projects for construction petroleum products or to serve the cold chain needs now in warehousing we do have some global and regional players like agility and dhl Uh, and they operate, uh, and of course, in in courier services, you got TCS and Muller and Fitz. Um, but these are exceptions. Their standards are, of course, superior than the the national norms. Uh, but they don't enjoy a level playing field as as we just discussed. Cold chain is at a very early stage of development. Unilever, for example, had to develop its own dedicated cold chain for its ice cream factory in Lahore to to serve the rest of the country. Um, and 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 this, of course, raised the cost of its offerings. Uh, so due to weak cold chain and the perishable hand and and poor uh, handling of perishables you know between 30 and 40% of vegetables and fruits perish before they get to the consumers there is therefore a need for a trucking reforms policy as babar just mentioned um so other than sub oil companies and the former sector owned trucks driver and maintenance uh, training is very poor there are no systems to track and trace making shipment times unpredictable and safety standards uh, uh, such as speeding and sharp braking are very difficult to monitor accidents like the oil tanker spillage that happened some years ago with the consequent fire in which many uh, people perished are all too common often there are also multiple intermediaries involved in procuring the services of road transportation this raises the cost of freight in some cities trucking mafias control entry and freight rates truckers unions are powerful and are known to hold the country to ransom by blocking roads from time to time now recently the good news is that some startups have uh, established online platforms in a sort of uber style manner uh, and that will promote transparency of transportation offerings uh, provide competitive you know bidding opportunities online booking track and trace facilities etc um, and one problem is the low availability of trailer trucks in pakistan as babar just mentioned you know the global norm is that trucks should be 50% should be uh, having trailer trucks so that they can carry containers in pakistan this is only 12% uh, the roads leading to and from karachi main port uh, which is the main uh, transportation or shipment point are very congested this delays the international trade and causes traffic jams and considerable pollution the so vaisa ring road has been constructed linking the, the karachi port with the north the route to karangi and landi where the industrial areas are 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 present they pass through heavily populated areas of defense housing authority so there is there is a proposal to make an over the sea road bypassing defense um, and so when when that comes to that that will you know hopefully attend to the congestion and the delays so one of the reasons for poor standing of pakistan logistics in global rankings is also the time it takes for customs clearance um, this is about three times the global standard fortunately pakistan single window initiative will bring this closer to the global norms by eliminating unnecessary duplication and by digitizing Uh, and create in transparency so tir uh, has already been mentioned there are only three or four companies that are tir uh, uh, you know uh, approved uh, tcs uh, conducted a maiden journey to uzbekistan and nlc has conducted uh, something to turkey and azerbaijan um, and so this opens up an opportunity but that you know for for reasons that babar has already mentioned and we won't, don't need to go into that uh you know they 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 have certain limitations nlc was mentioned um this is overseen by the ministry of planning whereas the rest of the industry is overseen by the ministry of communications it was established uh, for strategic transportation uh, reasons i'm not sure how valid those strategic transportation uh, reasons are uh, at last count according to the nlc website there are, they have 900 trucks which is a significant amount of trucks but nlc has got distracted they have gone into manufacturing polymer products i don't know what that has to do with trucking uh, construction solutions again the mind boggles asphalt production maybe there is some indirect uh, connection operating toll stations okay that that could be and running printing presses i don't know why they have to get into printing presses um, and we don't actually really know the information of financial performance i don't to the best of my knowledge i think it's not even published um, but maybe ministry of planning would know So in conclusion the logistics sector in Pakistan has really a long way to to come up to international standards foremost it needs reforms to formalize and modernize it through significant investment more companies like i think one of the companies that has just recently entered entered is Interloop a highly successful hosiery manufacturer uh, one of the i think the single largest supplier of uh, 
to Nike and to uh, to other uh, you know European and international uh, customers. Uh, they've entered logistics uh, field. Uh, the entry of online platforms, I think that will go a long way. There is uh, you know a thought that a Ministry of Transportation would help uh, address the fragmentation that currently exists, and Barber has covered that. Um, and and uh, a dedicated ministry, of, however, of railways has not managed to achieve. Again, Barber has, has covered that. Um, so the national logistics and freight policy, I think, definitely needs to come alive. The trucking reforms policy that Barber mentioned, I think if it was approved by the previous uh, government, uh, this government must carry it forward. Uh, however, they've only got 18 months to do it. And I think I will leave you on a last note that, you know, they, if in the absence of a national consensus on economy in general and logistics in particular, we are going to be nowhere. We'll, you know, we we would have been to the 23rd IMF program. We'll enter our 24th, and we'll, life will continue continue like this. And so the the you know the issues that have built up over the last 70, 75 years will continue unless all the political parties get together. Uh, and come up with one policy which doesn't change with the, with, the, with the change in government. So on that note, I will stop this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. A very well covered, Asan Sahib Babar Sahib. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. I'll hold my questions back. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be covered. It's a, it's a remarkable area, and I don't think we know anything. At least I don't know anything about it. Many people, you both have shown a huge mastery over the subject, but now I see lots of hands, so I'll bow to them. Let me bring in a policy maker. Salman Shah Sab, you represent the government. Can you please tell us what the issues are? <clears throat> uh, Nadeem Paleto, I think uh, this is a fabulous uh, webinar, mm -hmm. and you have got the experts uh, talking about it, Babur and Esan. I mean, they are they have their hands on the pulse. What I see uh, in this discussion is that logistics is not just uh, uh, logistics is not just uh, uh, a rolling stock or a driver or it's a system. So logistics is a management system and the challenge in Pakistan seems to be between the informal and the formal sector. Now, I, 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 I would like to know uh, whether this informality is due to the demand for logistics being informal. Uh, unless this is uh, there is a demand for a formalized logistics system which depends on lots of different elements uh, and the companies kind of outsource their uh, their their logistics uh, this will continue to be in the informal sector so the question is that is this is there demand for a formalized uh, logistics system? Uh, as San mentioned, warehousing, and there are a couple of companies which are trying to do that. But to me, it seems that there could be a very big opportunity where logistics management company can really do all of these things like right starting from the production center to a collection center and then moving it on to the destination through the most appropriate means and uh, tracking the entire system uh, the the shipment in the system and getting it delivered in time so my questions from the experts is is that too costly to do why 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 isn't economies of scale working in the logistics sector? What is stopping this kind of uh, development in Pakistan? And uh, uh, what are the economics? I mean, is the, is the Bedford truck so efficient that it is not allowing this modernization to happen? So this uh, question hai ke economically, I mean, at the end of the day, the producer wants 
good service. He wants it on time. He wants it at a, re a reasonable cost. He wants to uh, know where his shipment is. He wants security insurance and all that, which Bedford truck doesn't provide. So why isn't we? Why aren't we moving towards uh, some uh, uh, big firms, jinke uh, pas scale ho, and they just do logistics management? So as uh, Hassan was saying, and uh, Babur also said, even NLC, which was supposed to do all this in the public sector, is uh, wandering off in uh, in different directions. So is there really a demand for? A superior modern logistics management in this country. That's my question to the <clears throat> to the experts. Baba, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll okay. I'll do this. Um, Shasa, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is a sector which has been working very um, um, actively, as we all know, in the informal sector. There was a need to formalize it. That therefore we, and I'll focus on trucking. When we say logistics, so I'll move on to trucking because you mentioned trucks also. We came up with the trucking reform policy. That policy actually dealt with each and every facet of making the, of moving the trucking industry from the informal sector to the formal sector. It's also addressed the hindrances that may come up. They also uh, it also addressed the reluctance that some operators may have. But this policy, which was approved some time ago uh, from the federal government, then we had the 18th Amendment, and uh, it was supposed to be done with the provinces. But after the 18th Amendment, I think the provinces uh, have taken a large role, and the government has not been able to, or no government has actually taken the initiative to, to, to pursue it. If that policy is pursued, all these questions will be answered. All these things will be done. And there is definitely a need to do this. Definitely. As we can see, uh, there, you know, we need to, to definitely need to fix this up. I, th I think if I can add, uh, Jeez, I think so certainly, no. certainly the industry requires, uh, industry is demanding formalization. Now, hota ye hai ke when, when, when let's say there's a, a large local company or a multinational company, that has to accord by certain standards of safety and, and, and other, other key considerations, they then pick and choose. So they are by and large able to, to, to select a few operators uh, and then they go and uh, finance the upgradation. So in a way they are formalizing them uh, and they are able to bring them up to a certain speed. And those, those trucks or, or this rolling stock that, that is created as a result is then dedicated to, to provide services to them. That still does not mean that the, the entire operation of that operator gets formalized. So, so it, it just creates a duality. Uh, but they get an get they they get what they are what they they, they want. Um, I think there has to be a uh, a wider um, hunger uh, for for or wider demand uh, from the industry, the users, uh, to be able to formalize it. Now, we also know that half the country is informal anyway. So it's not just the trucking uh, part. You know, yep. there are producers who are in the informal sector. So it suits them. You know, I mean, we can produce something and somebody will transport it. Uh, and, you know, so it suits them. Um, so it is really the formal sector, which unfortunately is not uh, the whole entire sector, which is demanding formalization. And they are by and large able to get that. Dr. Sahib, you are muted. Sansa, very simple, but choti si sawal before I go to the others. I'll come back to you very quickly. Unilever, McDonald's, all the multinationals seem to be able to distribute their goods very well. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Shepsi. I mean, when I go to Skardu, for example, I see I have all these goods lying around, even in small Coca's and shops. You go in a remote area. You can see the things that you so is it a problem only of the domestic industry or yeah, multinational piece may interest it? No, so, sorry, Babur, you want to answer? No, I'll say, I'll say. I want to say that the companies like Unilever or, or some of the other ones that you've just mentioned, um, they, their brands have that power to reach, uh, but that is supplemented by their very effective distribution system. Yeah. 
uh, and of course at least from from their own production centers into their distribute into the distributors premises they are by and large using form i mean they're not by and large they are using formal transportation uh, you know uh, service providers right the distributors of course then they don't need trucks right because the distributors got the stuff and he only has to distribute within 10 20 mile radius so, so they are using pickups so um, so i would say that you know the drawing power is the brand strength coupled by a very well laid out distribution system so unilever for example in my time i mean i left unilever about 6 years ago uh, used to have about 340 350 distributors covering the entire country Mm-hmm. yeah and they obviously had a regional uh, you know depots etc from which these trucks used to ply from um, so they they had created uh, if you like uh, their own logistics uh, system which was very much formalized mm-hmm. the islands of excellence actually they were in the bigger picture the islands of excellence ne to babar sahab that means ke the local industry has a management problem more than a logistics problem because these guys no, no. they do multinational they're able to solve the problem no large, large large local companies are also able to resolve the problem they are also you know, able to do it i'm talking of let's say national food ya shan you yeah. know these are local companies uh, but in a way they've emulated the model that the multinationals yes. have set in the country so they are following that and they are there i mean you'll probably find national and shan being sold in virtually all parts of pakistan okay great thank you ji uh, ji habibullah sir habibullah sir chale dr takir shah sir dr takir shah thank you doctor uh, and thank you to babar sahab and uh, the chairman of the pakistan banking council for a very uh, in depth discussion dr sahab just a few points um, it was mentioned <clears throat> about the customs um, rigmarole that the trade and the logistics has to face i would just like to bring in to discussion which uh, uh international convention uh, in which uh, babar sahab had a great contribution when we were ratifying it which is the trade facilitation trade facilitation agreement of the wto uh, we have ratified it in 2017 and i think uh, it is a very important convention to complement the logistic sector i always say that uh, hats off to people who are in logistic business in pakistan because working in logistics business in pakistan is like swimming in a pool of glue there are thousand forces which are pulling them down be it tax be it regulation be it law enforcement you name it and there are huge barriers but still uh, uh, it it's a, it's it's a brave sector which is uh, enduring all this regulatory burden uh, it was very rightly mentioned that uh, there are more than two dozen institutions which regulate this sector and there is no one nodal point in the government which should join it up uh, till the time what babar sahab suggested that we have a separate entity there is an institution in the ministry of commerce called the national trade and transport facilitation committee headed by the secretary uh, in the early 2000 it was cited as a global best practice and babar sahab was part of that team which had put it together uh, in between it became dormant but we are glad that the present uh, leadership in the ministry of commerce has uh, reinvigorated it so i believe that uh, we should uh, put uh, efforts into making this forum more efficient it has all the light uh, composition uh, and it also a conditionality of the wto agreement to have a national trade facilitation committee uh, just to share that uh, last month the federal cabinet has approved the strategic trade policy framework for the year 2020 to 2025 it has a commitment to the logistics sector the 18 sectors that uh, they have identified logistics is being uh, recognized as a trade support sector and rightly so uh, i am coordinating a project of international trade center in pakistan international trade center geneva which is a, a un body for uh, smes and trade uh, the ministry asked us to uh, put together a plan of action for logistics so when we went and met all the stakeholders especially fiata 
and the freight uh, operators association of pakistan and the different ministries we found that everything was there the 2007 trucking policy that is repeatedly being mentioned is there uh, there's good work which was done by babar saab so uh, our consultant who is now as a, a part of the participants also ms bahasan we have put together a plan of action which did not need much effort because everything was there it was only to put it into one framework it has been submitted to the ministry and we have a understanding from the ministry that soon this national uh, plan of action will be put up to the prime minister in the national trade development board so let's hope that this sees the light of the day it uh, uh, has just collated all the key areas that were mentioned in today's presentation so uh, my last take is that nowadays we hear a lot about e-commerce the unctad brings out a national or international e-commerce readiness index pakistan is placed in the bottom quadrant of the global e-commerce readiness index and when you go deep into it you see that it is primarily because of the last mile logistics that we are very low in the global e-commerce index so if we have to realize the digital pakistan vision and the digital market and e-commerce uh, uh, of goods i think again uh, logistics would be an important uh, area so uh, once again thank you dorsa for bringing in this very important issue on the table uh, for dialogue because we believe that logistics is the most important trade sport function thank you thank you dr sir dr sir please come to pid we must discuss all these things we'll collaborate with you you are one of our eminent people mashallah you got a lot of experience please come to pid we'll talk about it ji babar sir that's something like to say on that ji thank you um, uh, dr sir i'll just quickly um, um, uh, to to supplement what you said you know there is a misnomer that logistics belongs to the ministry of ports and shipping sometimes they take it to the ministry of communications ports and shipping is a nuts and bolts uh, ministry they are they take care of the port and and and, and some of the, the 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 operational issues logistics it is cell in itself uh, which which as i said earlier um, uh, covers uh, everything more related to transport from the point of origin to the point of final consumption now this is actually retermed globally as trade facilitation so we are intrinsically linked with the ministry of trade with the ministry of commerce and with the merchants which as ansab of course you are there and uh, so so we what we perform is a trade facilitation function so when you go to communication ministry or you go to ministry of ports and shipping they are very operational the jahaz kitne baje aaya uski ye kya so that doesn't work in policy making over here that's a different area where and iski clarity bhi nahi hai uh, you know uh, like i i was i met somebody in islam bad on the lighter side wo kehta hai kya karte hai main kehta hai main shipping karta hu tisa na mera bhi ek cousin hai wo karachi shipyard mein kaam karta hai i mean you know that's a connect there with 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 you know so uh, what i'm saying is that we have to understand this and i am um, uh, uh, lisa while quickly um, i mentioned something else um, maybe it um, uh, clicks thoughts uh, the, for the for the time we have left and it's on for you today our industry's biggest challenge other than what asan you mentioned local uh, deliveries and transportation is is shipping because uh, there are no containers available जिस चीज का फ्रेट पंद्रह हजार जो जिसका पंद्रह सौ डॉलर था वो पंद्रह हजार डॉलर हो गया जिसका तीन हजार डॉलर था वो चौदह हजार डॉलर हो गया डिफरेंट लोकेशन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट एज आई से शिपिंग कंपनीज कंट्रोल नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द Uh, of the of the container trade so if they don't if they sit down together you've seen what's happened to the uh, to the rates and this is how ec economies are held uh, hostage uh, to the every single exporter aapke jitne trade much everybody is having problem on containers humko order aata hai dete hain ji humko 40 container chahiye hum jaate hain humko 6 mil rahe hain kabhi 7 mil rahe so you know there is a big big problem going on so again this is uh moving away from what you said from trucking uh onto shipping this is what's happening over here uh, this is just to uh, food for your thought actually 
Jeev, 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 thank you. Asan sir, would you like to say something or should I move on? Uh, no, I'm, I'm done. Thank okay. you. Habibullah sir. Habibullah sir, will you speak? I don't think you can hear me. Chaliye, Hijazi sir. Tahir Hijazi sir. Thank you. Uh, Pain is uh, always uh, there to surprise us with uh, bringing discussion on things which we have uh, practically forgotten. And today, I think I was really amazed to uh, listen to uh, Mr. Barber and Mr. Hassan when speaking up, uh, you know, pretty deep into the logistic issues of Pakistan. I have got a couple of questions. I want to make. Ajayi sahab, aapki awaaz thik nahi aari, zara mic ke paas aajay. Ji. The first thing is, uh, can you hear me now, Claire? We can hear you. Ji, bolye. Okay. The first thing uh, is that um, he mentioned about the cost of uh, transportation by train is 90 rupees per ton per 100 uh, kilometer and truck 250. I would like to uh, ask him uh, that what what is, is it uh, the local Pakistani data or it's international? Uh, number two, um, have you included water channels as cost of transportation through water channels? Because Pakistan has got 75,000 kilometers of water channels, canals, rivers, whatever. And uh, I was reading that in Germany, about 16,000 uh, water channels are used for general transportation of you know cargo and uh, passengers and all that. So what about uh, uh, why we are simply ignoring our water channels in uh, logistic transportation? Number three. Uh, I, I would like to uh, draw this attention to Pied basically is that, you know, like this uh, logistic uh, title, I, I never see them in the university as a part of a research activities. And I, I would suggest that uh, the government or Pied uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, push the government to have some funding for the university for minor research work on uh, logistics. Thank you. Okay, so can I, can I answer the first question, which was the comparative between rail and uh, things? Okay, these are figures that I took from the National Logistics and Freight Policy, uh, which is something that has been on the anvil. Uh, and I believe these are uh, global uh, norms. Um, so Pakistani norms would be proportional. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second, water channels. Water, water channels, channels, I think, Baba. Okay, I was, may I, uh, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, water channels. Um, um, uh, I think you know. Uh, I did mention it very briefly because we do not have any transport on water channels. So this is something uh, which is uh, which is something which we should do, uh, but perhaps in the future or start working on it now. What we were trying to address now is the four areas of transport which are currently uh, uh, working or currently running, which is ocean transport, air transport, trucking, and rail. These are the four areas that we discussed um, um, uh, in more detail. Of course, water channels need to be done, but it's seasonal. Uh, we have got a system where we have got the barrages. You have to make uh, bypasses from the barrages. So there is a substantial investment and a commitment required over there. So I don't know if the government is not able to, or if um, uh, we're not being able to get the government's attention on the four existing ones, would we be really be able to push them so much into new ventures. Um, uh, at the same time, I will tell you that there has been work done it, on it the last three, four years, and they have people who spent time on it. There is uh, some document on it. So at some point in time, um, uh, if these things are addressed, maybe that also comes, uh, comes up. Salman Amin, sir. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, sir. Uh, just to firstly uh, congratulate Paid, Baba Sahab, Asan Malik Sahab for holding this event. Uh, just to highlight and bring the energy perspective to it. Because the energy sector is going to this side, its reliance on logistics is going to be very high. We see the North-South pipeline. I don't know whether it's a wishful thinking, when it will happen or what will happen. Till that time, we have to go along with the visual pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> so, virtual pipelines, we have to do this, 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 we have to do 
dusra ye hai ki as a gm commercial uh, in oji diesel i was working almost 10 years back i had to face so much of problem to transport the crude to refineries aur uski wajah se even oji diesel ki production baad ka rukni pad jati thi because wahi baat hoti hai ki either you have to go for individual individuals ko deal karna aur ek corporate ko deal karna bahut fark hota hai आगे इवन यू इवन हायर एनएलसी एनएलसी का भी अपना फ्लीट पूरा नहीं होता था एनएलसी भी अपना फ्लीट लिक्विड कार्गो के लिए आगे इंडिविजुअल्स को हायर करता था सो so, ये वाली चीजें हमने ओवर द इयर्स वी हैव नॉट इम्प्रूव्ड इट और तीसरा एस्पेक्ट मैं बात करूंगा रेगुलेटरी एस्पेक्ट से मैं एक एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ कि कोल जो है साहिवाल के अंदर आपका कोल प्लांट लगा हुआ है अब कोल ट्रांसपोर्ट हो रहा है who is going to regulate or define that tariff transportation tariff which is going to be ultimately becoming part of your electricity tariff ab hum kis ki taraf dekhte hain kaun se ministry ki taraf dekhein aur aakhir mein agar aaj aap dekhein wo coal ka tariff kisne define kiya hua hai that has been defined by napra napra coal ki transportation ka tariff define kar raha hai so ye teen cheeze hain which i would like to flag and highlight ke energy sector ke logistics they are not being given the importance they should have been given and over the years we are not giving the required focus or you know what sort of uh, the policy and infrastructure and regulatory that hum regulator nahi chahte magar ye ki in cheezon ko kahin hal nikala jaye inke upar abhi tak nahi socha ja raha aur agla energy crisis mulk ke andar aayega wo logistics ki wajah se aayega so thanks again for this जी 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 अबर साहब मुझे नहीं थैंक यू 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 फॉर योर योर क्वेश्चन एंड सी सिंस बीन क्लोजली कनेक्टेड टू द एनर्जी सेक्टर यू मेंशन एनर्जी बट लेट मी टेल एनर्जी availability so uh, it is not uh, it, it 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 works across all industries every area is affected by this of course energy is very critical uh, there has to be special um, um, uh, emphasis on that and that needs to come but that will only come after they address the logistics sector so if you address the logistics sector you will get money into it and that can then find its way into into the energy sector i would like to mention one thing over here that you we have to be very uh, very clear on the regulatory area now um, the government has two roles the government has a roles to incentivize an, a business or to create the enabling environment and the legislation for the private sector to 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 move forward then as a secondary role it has a role to regulate a parts of that area but by and large it has to be market mechanism and that's the way the world moves today and that's the way we should be moving that supply and demand in proper terms should define the rates and they should define uh, everything the government cannot come in and define the uh, the rates as is being done today or uh, in the absence of so many other things maybe that's done but this whole system has to be fixed but it has to be done step by step and here i will um, uh, seek out the partnership of uh, sansa and the trade that together we should climb and on the tables uh, not Uh, where we sit, we should climb on the tables and shout out loud to the government that please look at logistics. Uh, it's our business, but it's your business, and it affects your business, the trade also. Yes, yeah, Sansa, would you like to say something? No, I'm just going to say I couldn't agree more on that. Uh, I, 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 I really think that uh, you know the the, uh, the the government actually is is listening. but they are not able to do uh, anything with it unfortunately there is seems to be a paralysis of decision making uh, and i'm not clear wow, what is the reason i mean partly the blame goes on bureaucracy and nab and this and that i think those are exaggerated um, i i i really believe that uh, you know the the somebody has to take it head on the issue in this particular case is fragmentation you know ports is looked after by somebody else uh, you know the uh, road transportation is looked after by somebody the rail transportation is looked after by somebody else i think this every all all of that needs to come together um, and only then we will be able to uh, to to get the uh, you know meaningful action but you're right we, we need to keep shouting ji aware chapa sir 
Avesh Chipasa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Babar Sahib. Thank you, Asasa, for a wonderful discussion and uh, and putting down the challenges what we are facing in logistics. Uh, I've got a few points that I would like to uh, talk about in this forum. Is like we were discussing on the train utilization. And I can see the major drawback what we see here is the while the container bogies are available, but uh, we don't have containers to move forward. And due to these days, uh, you can see the detention free days are quite reduced that that the earlier if it was supposed to be moved via train, but now it could not be moved because there are limited free days available. And for that matter of fact, I believe if the train facilities are given with the containers. Maybe the, 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 the containers are privatized or maybe these containers are owned by themselves. So the containers availability are the main factors which are restricting uh, trains to move up uh, to the Northern areas. And because uh, majorly the downstream movements are dependent on these containers. And we will see this uh, uh, outbound or the down Oops, on stream movements being challenging. To so if some containers are, and some containers are if available for such movements, if they are available for a rent or it, if these train companies could could uh, introduce it, they're afraid with the container availability, this could have uh, solved the issue. And secondly, these trains are majorly working on the import or export basis. So there should be a window where local movement should be considered uh, besides export or import. So the local movement should be carried out by these uh, train companies. Secondly, I would like to mention that uh, where we see a problem in safety or where we see a problem in uh, understanding or the speed and everything, we see there is a, there's a problem of uh, the commercial training institute for these commercial vehicles, because if if this logistics in our DNA, there should be an institute which is thoroughly being focused. So if there has to be a driver who wants to drive a truck, needs to have needs to know a particular station or a particular institute where he can get all those norms, all those um, institutes or those degrees or those certifications where he can actually drive a truck safely and can easily get an HTV license to avoid such incident, accident and the safety factors. Besides uh, uh, talking about, if we could review our logistics movement into utilization perspective, if we could speed up our processes, maybe we can uh, utilize our existing uh, truck more better than ever because uh, if we can utilize it much, uh, faster, or uh, you see, if we are uh, transporting goods in a truck, take 72 hours to take a delivery, or maybe we can um, try to find better trucks, or we can exchange with different drivers on the go, and we can, uh, you know, keep this thing moving so we can reduce the fact. So this is what I want to say. Thank you, thank you. Anybody wants to say anything, the Baba Sab, Asan Sab? Yeah, shall I? Go hey, Doctor, I, uh, I need to leave. I have got another uh, yes. webinar to go. Is that okay if I go? Exactly. Thank you, D. Thank you very much, Asan Sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Baba Sir, we'll take the last question, then come back to you. Asanullah Sir, Asanullah Siddiqui Sir. Asanullah. Hi, Asan Sir. Hi, Asan. Baba Sir, how are you? Very good. Okay, I basically. ये रिसर्च करना चाह रहा था आप बावर साहब खास तौर पे चेयरमैन भी हैं गर्भन टीआर कमेटी के पाकिस्तान में मैं अभी जब पायलट प्रोजेक्ट किया था एनएलसी ने आजरबाइजान और टर्की के लिए तो मैं उनका एज ए कंसलटेंट उसमें उनके साथ इन्वॉल्व भी था फिर मैंने एक ट्रेनिंग भी कंडक्ट की थी जिसमें पूरे कमर्शियल बैंक्स की जो लीडरशिप है उनके कंप्लायंस हेड्स और ट्रेड हेड्स हैं वो उसमें मौजूद थे पाकिस्तान में टीआईआर कन्वेंशन को स्टॉप किया हुआ है कमांड के तमाम कमर्शियल बैंक्स ने दे आर नॉट अलाइंग ट्रांजैक्शन अंडर टीआईआर कन्वेंशन 
वाय ईरान क्योंकि फिलहाल हमारे पास सिर्फ वाय ईरान का रूट है एंड दे आर नॉट इशू जैसे अभी अभी तो पी एस डब्ल्यू आ गया है लेकिन इससे पहले जो फॉर्म ई इशू नहीं कर रहे थे और फॉर्म आई फॉर्म इशू नहीं कर रहे थे बिकॉज वो समझते हैं कमर्शियल बैंक के इसमें ओफैक रूल्स अप्लाई होते हैं और इसलिए वो आ, कोई भी मूवमेंट वाय ईरान जा रही हो तो उसको अलाउ नहीं कर रहे स्टिल अलाउ नहीं कर रहा है इसलिए ये मूवमेंट नहीं हो पा रही है इवन जो अभी रेल के थ्रू जो शिपमेंट्स अभी गई हैं उसमें भी अगर आप उसके डॉक्यूमेंटेशन पे जाके देखें तो वहाँ डिसेप्शन इन्वॉल्व है वहाँ पे डुप्लीकेशन की गई है डॉक्यूमेंटेशन को और उसको ईरान वाया ईरान जो मूवमेंट है रेल की उसको छुपाया गया है जो बैंकों में डॉक्यूमेंट सबमिट किए गए हैं उसमें ईरान का जिक्र नहीं किया गया उसमें उन्होंने गलत उसको डिक्लेयर किया है तो ये मामला जो है ये रजाक दाऊद साहब के पास भी पहुंचा हुआ है उन तक भी ये चीज मौजूद है कि जनाब ये जो गवर्नमेंट है इसके ऊपर इनिशिएटिव ले स्टेट बैंक ने भी एक लेटर लिखा था मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स को भी लिखा था सेक्रेटरी को कि जी इस पर कोई एक्सपर्ट्स की कमेटी बैठनी चाहिए कोई लीगल कमेटी बैठनी चाहिए और गवर्नमेंट इस पर टेक इंटेक हमें कोई इंटेक देगी क्या करना है तो उन्होंने भी अपने हाथ पाँव उठा लिया है ये मामला स्टिल स्टक हुआ हुआ है नो बट इज एबल टू हैंडल मूवमेंट इवन बाय रेल और अंडर टी आई बाय रोड क्योंकि वो ओफैक की वजह से नो कमर्शियल बैंक एज ऑफ टूडे नो कमर्शियल बैंक इज इज एक्सेप्टिंग शिपमेंट फॉर ईरान थैंक यू बाबर साहब लास्ट वर्ड टू यू जी आई विल इजान साहब आपसे पहले मैं चिपा साहब का क्विकली एक एक एस्पेक्ट आंसर कर देता हूँ चिपा साहब ने ट्रेनिंग के बारे में कहा था चिपा साहब ये जो ट्रक्स की और ड्राइवर्स की ट्रेनिंग है वो जो मैंने ट्रकिंग पॉलिसी आपको कहा था जो बनाई थी हम लोगों ने उसकी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन के अंदर वो मौजूद है अगर आपने ट्रकिंग की ट्रेनिंग या ड्राइवर ट्रेनिंग और उस टाइप की चीज करनी जो ओवरऑल लॉजिस्टिक्स की ट्रेनिंग है उसके लिए पीफा जो लॉजिस्टिक्स ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो हमने बनाई थी पंद्रह साल पहले बल्कि ज्यादा हाँ अबाउट फिफ्टीन ईयर सिक्सटीन ईयर्स अगो उसमें सारे फैसेट ऑफ जो लॉजिस्टिक्स है एयर फ्रेट सी फ्रेट रोड फ्रेट सब उसमें ट्रेनिंग है और उसका बड़ा एक अच्छा इंस्टीट्यूट है जिसमें ये कोर्सेज रन करते हैं दे आर इंटरनेशनली वेलिडेटेड कोर्सेज एवरी थ्री ईयर्स दिस कोर्सेज आर अपडेटेड एंड वेलिडेटेड बाई फियाटा तो उधर भी कोर्सेज हो सकते हैं अगर आपका इफ आई एम एबल टू आंसर एक क्वेश्चन एजान साहब आपका जो सवाल है अबाउट दिस यू नो दिस इज मोर एन इश्यू विद फॉरन ऑफिस द क्वेश्चन इज दैट ईरान इज अंडर अ ग्लोबल सेंक्शन देर आर सर्टन एरियाज वेर एग्जामेशन आर गिवेन बाई द यू एन एंड दैट्स अप टू द फॉरन ऑफिस टू टेक इट फ्रॉम द यू एन The TIR as अच्छा आपके आने से शायद पहले मैंने ये मैंशन किया था अबाउट दिस ईरान सिचुएशन आपने तब नहीं सुना कि नहीं सुना उसमें मैंने यही कहा था कि आपने एन एल सी के साथ जैसे काम किया है एन एल सी ने जो कैरी किया है टर्की के लिए सामान वो ईरान के थ्रू लेके गए आई डोंट नो इफ दे आर कम्फर्टेबल एंड गोइंग थ्रू अफगानिस्तान और नॉट द प्राइवेट सेक्टर गोज आई डोंट नो इफ दे कैन गो और दे वुड लाइक टू गो बट ईरान के थ्रू सेंक्शन कंट्री के थ्रू जाना बैंक के लिए प्रॉब्लम है अदरवाइज बैंक कैन बी सेंक्शन सो दैट इज अ मच डिफरेंट एंड लार्जर इशू जो कि फॉरन ऑफिस से टेकअप करना जरूरी है इट्स नॉट सो मच ऑपरेशन और टी आई आर रेलिवेंट इशू एक्चुअली इसमें मैं आपको बताऊँ कि जो कमर्शियल बैंक के साथ बात हुई थी ओफेक रूल्स हमने वहाँ पे डिस्कस भी किए थे और ये चूंकि ट्रांजिट है वाई ईरान ओफेक रूल्स जो है वो ट्रांजिट को डिस्करेज नहीं करते हैं वाई ईरान बाई एयर तो ट्रांजिट हो ही रहा है बाई रोड भी नहीं है लेकिन बैंक चाहते हैं कि उनको कोई गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से या कोई इदारा उनको इन राइटिंग में लिख के दे क्योंकि तुर्की से हर महीने दस हजार ट्रक सेंट्रल एशिया जाते हैं वाई ईरान और अगर सेंक्शन कंट्री है तो तुर्की से कैसे जा रहे हैं और यूरोप से जो ट्रक्स आ रहे हैं हर हफ्ते के हर महीने दस हजार ट्रक वो भी तो सेंट्रल एशिया वाई ईरान ही जा रहे हैं तो हमारे वी नीड अ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड लॉजिस्टिक्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ इश्यूज लाइक दिस आई कम बैक टू माई पॉइंट नंबर वन अदीम साहब मैंने भी एक कि बाबर साहब मेरा एक दोस्त है इंडिया में जेरी राव जिसने बहुत बड़ी कंपनी बना दी थी और सॉफ्टवेयर एसोसिएशन का भी वो चेयरमैन था तो उसने जब क्या कहते हैं मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आईटी बन गई तो उसने बयान दे दिया कि अब आईटी मर जाएगी क्योंकि मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री बन जाती है तो मिनिस्ट्री बेड़ा गर्ज करती है मैं तो हैरान हूँ हमारी इंडस्ट्री के वो मिनिस्ट्री क्यों मांगती है मैं तो कहता हूँ मिनिस्ट्री इज द किस ऑफ डेथ बल्कि मिनिस्ट्री को खत्म करे तो बेहतर है मेरे नजरिए में तो कम अज कम यह खैर चलिए बट बाकी ये चीजें जो मैं हैरान होता हूँ कोई फ्रेंकली देखिए 
सारा जो फेलियर मुझे नजर आ रहा है इज वन ऑफ कोऑर्डिनेशन इज वन ऑफ गवर्नेंस एंड वॉट वी ट्राई एंड डू इज राज कोऑर्डिनेट एंड डू थिंग प्रॉपरली वी ट्राई एंड बिल्ड मोर एंड मोर मिनिस्ट्री सो दैट इज मोर एंड मोर ऑफ अ मेस ठीक है जी प्लानिंग का प्रॉब्लम है प्लानिंग हम रोड्स बनाई जा रहे हैं रोड्स बनाई जा रहे हैं विदाउट हैविंग सॉफ्टवेयर मैं 20 साल से लिख लिख के तंग आ गया हूँ वी बिल्ड थिंग विदाउट नोइंग वाई वी आर बिल्डिंग दैम हमने कोल प्लांट्स लगा लिए विदाउट नोइंग वाई वी आर डूइंग दैन हमने रोड्स बना लिए विदाउट नोइंग उन रोड्स का फायदा क्या है ठीक है जी मैं एम टू पे जाता हूँ तो अभी जाने वाला हूँ थोड़ी देर में एम टू पे एम टू पे तो ट्रक्स होते नहीं है जी जी रोड पर जाओ ट्रक ही ट्रक बैठा होता है तो एम टू किस लिए हमने बनाया था अच्छा इसी तरह अगर हम देखें तो हम एक ये लर्चिंग फ्रॉम क्राइसिस टू क्राइसिस हर साल क्राइसिस होता है हर साल हर दो महीने बल्कि अब तो क्राइसिस आ गया और इन बढ़ता जाएगा क्योंकि हमें समझ नहीं आ रही एक डॉक्यूमेंटेशन का मसला है आप लोग सब बिग बिजनेसमैन एहसान साहब चले गए मैं कहना चाह रहा था उनकी प्रेजेंस में ये लोग सारा दिन बैठ के डॉक्यूमेंटेशन का शोर मचाते हैं तो फिर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन का शोर मचाते हैं तो ठीक है फिर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन कॉस्ट होते हैं डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इज नॉट फ्री डॉक्यूमेंटेशन कॉस्ट और अगर आप तो छोटे छोटे लोग कॉस्ट नहीं देने को तैयार आई हैव सिंपथी विद वो क्यों कॉस्ट दें भाई उनके बेचारे के पास दम ही नहीं है वो कॉस्ट देने का वो जो ड्राइवर बेचारा मैं देखता हूँ मंजियों पर सोता है या ट्रक के बीच में सोता है उसके पास कोई फैसिलिटी नहीं होती वो दूसरे ट्रकों की तरह थोड़ी है कि वो आठ घंटे चलाता है फिर मोटेल में जाके कंफर्टेबली सोता है आराम से जाके रात को भाई बियर पीता है और फिर सो जाता है हमारे ट्रक तो बेचारे जलील होते हैं तो आप उन पर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन डालेंगे तो कैसे काम चलेगा आई थिंक क्वाइट फ्रेंकली दिस इज वाई होल्ड दिस वेबिनार्स वी रियली नीड टू कम टूगेदर एज अ नेशन एंड स्टार्ट थिंकिंग बिफोर वी स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग वी हैव बिल्ड सो मच विदाउट थिंकिंग उसी का हम खमियाजा भुगत रहे हैं हमारा जो डेट है वो इसी के लिए है कि हम बनाई जाते हैं चीजें विदाउट थिंकिंग मेट्रो बना दिए पता नहीं समझ नहीं आती क्यों बना दिए सिग्नल फ्री कॉरिडोर बना दिए किसी को नहीं समझ आती क्यों बना दिया सीपे के प्रोजेक्ट ले लिए किसी को नहीं समझ आती क्यों बना दिया हम प्रोजेक्ट मोड में चल रहे हैं हम अगेन बीस साल तीस साल हो गए कहते कहते प्रोजेक्ट मोड बंद कर दो यार प्रोजेक्ट मोड महबूब लाख के जमाने का था अब प्रोजेक्ट मोड की जरूरत कोई नहीं अब भी नीड अब मोर होलिस्टिक मोर कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव मोड ऑफ डूइंग थिंकिंग बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली वो हम सोच नहीं सकते तो फिर हम क्या करते हैं बाबर साहब वो करते हैं पता नहीं बचपन में आपने पतंगे उड़ाई होंगी मैंने भी उड़ाई थी शाह साहब ने भी उड़ाई थी पतंगों को जब वो एक टुक लगता था हम चेपी लगा देते थे वो आटा मुंह चबा के और उसके ऊपर लगा देते थे थोड़ी देर के बाद पतंग नहीं हो चुकी थी अब ये पतंग वो हो चुकी है कि जिसके ऊपर इतनी चेपियाँ लग चुकी है इतनी चेपियाँ लग चुकी है कि मेरा ख्याल ये पतंग नहीं होनी पर अब मसला यह है कि हमारे जो हुक्मरान हैं वो सारे भागी फिर रहे हैं भागी फिर रहे हैं तो कीर साहब आई होप इज वो सारे भागी फिर रहे हैं एक क्राइसिस मोड में मैं तो हमेशा प्लानिंग को तीन साल में यही पूछता रह गया कि भाई क्राइसिस है कहाँ वो कहते नहीं अगली मीटिंग पे चलो वहाँ क्राइसिस है फिर अगली मीटिंग पे चलो वहाँ क्राइसिस है दिन में पचास मीटिंगों के बाद थके हारे घर आते थे वेयर इज द ब्लडी क्राइसिस और उन, उनको को यार कुछ चीज पढ़ लो वो कहते हमारे पास टाइम नहीं पढ़ने का क्योंकि हम तो क्राइसिस पे जा रहे हैं तो मसला ये है कि दिस इज आई थिंक वाइट फ्रेंकली दीज आर ऑल प्रॉब्लम ऑफ आर ऑन मेकिंग बिकॉज ए वी आर मूविंग फ्रॉम क्राइसिस टू क्राइसिस टू वी आर पुटिंग इन टू मेनी चेपीज आर टू मेनी रेगुलेटर्स अभी हम दस तारीख को बाबर साहब एक नौ तारीख को परसों एक वेबिनार कर रहे हैं वेबिनार नहीं पूरा सेमिनार का खैर वेब भी होगा पूरा सेमिनार दोनों चीजें कर रहे हैं ऑन वॉट वी कॉल स्लच विच इज दस्ट ऑफ कॉस्ट ऑफ रेगुलेशन इतनी कॉस्ट ऑफ रेगुलेशन है मुझे समझ नहीं आती आप बिजनेस को करते हैं पाकिस्तान में यहाँ तो रेगुलेशन ही रेगुलेशन है इसका नाम हमने रखा हुआ है एनओसी स्तान लाइसेंसेस मैंने अभी गूगल ट्रेंड्स पे देखा लाइसेंसेस आपके सबसे ज्यादा सर्च टर्म्स पता है क्या है लाइसेंस और प्लॉट तो मतलब ये आपने इकॉनमी बना दी है लाइसेंस और प्लॉट वाली तो इंडिया ने तो लाइसेंस खत्म कर दिया तो हम अनफॉर्चुनेटली इधर ही फंसे हुए हैं आई एम ग्लैड आपने जो बातें की हैं यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट वी नीड टू थिंक थ्रू दोलिस्टिकली but the private sector also has to think through it holistically private sector now it has come to time to accept the informal sector informal sector se ladai karna chhod de ab dono ek dusre ko maar rahe hain informal sector ko apna le wo chote log hain unko chalne de koi baat nahi unke sath chale unke sath compete kare wo grow karenge khud hi aa jayenge formal sector mein koi badi baat nahi hai par humne saara waqt unko kabhi aapke paas wo kya bolta hai filer non filer ye wo badmashiye kar kar ke humne sari economy ka bada kar kar diya isko rethink karne ki zarurat hai i don't know who's going to rethink it shaji and i are on the way out we failed let's hope somebody else will be able to think all the best ji khuda hafiz thank you ji